Hi, I'm Chris and welcome to Earth Juice. This week we're looking at how animals get around. A new study on Cape vultures has shown them using power lines and pylons to travel thousands of kilometres, much further than any other species of vulture. And also this week, a study has shown Swiss spending up to 200 days on the wing on their annual migrations. So how do animals do it? How do they navigate over these vast distances? And are man-made structures affecting where they go? In the Cape Vulture study, which was published in the journal PLOS One, nine birds were tagged with GPS trackers, which measured how far they traveled and where they landed to feed and roost. The data collected showed that the Cape Vultures were traveling much further than previously thought. They're traveling over most of Southern Africa, and each bird is covering an area larger than the British Isles. But it's how they're doing it that is the really fascinating finding. The birds are using power lines to travel more than a thousand kilometers. What they're doing is using the man-made pylons as roosting sites in areas that were previously lacking in suitable perches. So it seems that our man-made structures may even be extending the range of the Cape Vulture. But this isn't the first time that our infrastructure has influenced animal journeys. In fact, a study in 2004 on homing pigeons showed that they're using things like highways and motorways or railway lines to find their way home, even turning off at particular road junctions. And coming back to a more recent study, in the last couple of weeks a paper was published where scientists attached tiny radio transmitters to the back of Swiss. This allowed them to finally prove that they can stay in the air for 200 days, even taking naps as they fly from Europe to West Africa. So clearly the methods animals use to get around has been the subject of a lot of scientific research, but it's not all epic migrations. How do animals do it even at the small scale? Well, several methods have been put forward. Firstly, some animals like the desert ant are thought to use a system called path integration or dead reckoning. Basically, what these animals are doing is wandering around the desert all day searching for food. Then, when the time comes to come home at the end of the day, somehow they've logged all of those movements and can navigate back to the nest by the most direct route. A second method is the use of landmarks. Animals such as the digger wasp navigate by learning the location of things like trees and rocks relative to their home. A third and even more complex method is the use of cognitive maps. This is where an animal is thought to remember its whole environment and keep a map in its own head. That, of course, is almost impossible to prove, but there is some evidence that honeybees may use cognitive maps to get around. Of course, most of those methods are referring to quite small local journeys. What about those epic migrations? What about those swifts from earlier, or the whales or the wildebeest, the caribou or the monarch butterflies? Well, it's thought that these animals have a kind of internal navigation system, almost like a GPS. This could be based on a sun compass, so they can work out their position by looking at the location of the sun in the sky. Or it could be based on the Earth's magnetic field, by which I mean animals that can detect that field can use it to navigate in much the same way that we would use a compass. This could explain how the green turtle, many years after it was born, returns to the very same beach that it hatched from, the salmon from the same river, or the wildebeest from the same plain. So it seems pretty obvious that animals use a whole host of different strategies and senses to navigate. The exact mechanisms remain unclear. We simply don't know how animals can go on such long yet precise journeys. But if animals are using things like landmarks and cognitive maps to navigate, it seems pretty clear that by building networks of power lines, of roads, of railway lines, we must be having an effect on the way animals move around. And finally this week, there was one more bit of wildlife news that we just had to bring you, and that is that the Himalayan Yeti may not be a myth after all. Genetic tests were done on a hare found in the region, and striking similarities were found between that and an ancient polar bear. So maybe there is a prehistoric type bear still wandering the mountains. What do you think? Is it still out there? Will we ever find the Yeti? Let us know in the comments below, and we'll see you next week. Migrating birds also make behavioural changes. Solitary birds often come together to fly in a flock to help protect them from predators, and it's thought to increase their flight efficiency. If you listen to how pigeons fly, they've got very, very stiff flight feathers yeah. because they're designed, they can, they can sustain good speed over a long distance. Look at that, and it's just quite a big set of wings there, much bigger than the peregrine to look at compared to the size of the body. Really just, throwing them out there, isn't it? Really, yeah, keeps them wide.